This video looks at solving quadratic equations and finding the vertex of some parabolas from some problems that showed up on a quiz that we recently did. Here's the first problem. These two binomials multiply together to give a quadratic, so most of the heavy lifting is already done here. Notice that because these two things multiply together to give us zero, the zero product property assures us that either 2x plus 3 is equal to zero or else the other factor, 5x minus 2, is equal to 0. If either one of those happen, this resolve is going to be 0, and that's the only way that that can happen is for, the only way that this product can be equal to 0 is for one of these to be equal to 0. In this case, we could subtract a 3 from both sides of the equation and then divide by 2, so it would have a minus, x is equal to a minus 3 divided by 2. In the other case, we can add a 2 to both sides of the equation and divide by 5. So x would be equal to 2 divided by 5. So there are the two solutions. We, pro we should go back and substitute them in the original problem and verify that they're true. We're not going to take the time in this video to do that. Here's the second problem. Possibly we'll be able to factor that. Uh, it's always worth looking at the problem to see if you can factor. Usually there's less computations and less chance for error in doing that. In this case, there is a common factor of 2. So let me rewrite this as 2 times 5x squared minus 8x plus 3 is equal to 0. So again, we've got the zero product property. We've got two things that multiply together to give us zero. The only way that that can happen is for one of them to be zero. Two is not zero, so the other one must be zero. So we've got the conclusion that 5x squared minus 8x plus 3 must be zero. We can get to that same conclusion by dividing both sides of this equation by 2 eliminating the 2 and getting us to this situation. Now we're hoping that this will factor. We always hope that they'll factor, but they don't always because sometimes they're a prime polynomial. Uh, we'd need to have a 5x and an x to get the x squared. I'm going to have to have a 1 and a 3 to get the, the 3 on the end. And in fact, both of these will have to be negative because this middle term is negative. There's all that reasoning about factoring going on here. My question is, can I find some way of putting 3 and 1 in here so that it multiplies together and adds up to be that negative 8? If a 3 is here and a 1 is here, I'll have a minus 3x and a 5x, so that will give me the minus 8x, so all the pieces work. The 5x times x will be the x squared. The end term works. Minus 3 and minus 1 gives me 3 in the middle term works out just fine. So that tells us that one of these two factors would have to be 0. 5x minus 3 is equal to 0 or else x minus 1 is equal to 0 again because of the zero product property. Add a th 3 to both sides and divide by 5. x would be equal to 3 fifths is one of the possibilities. That will make the original equation 0 and x is equal to 1. Add a 1 to both sides to find that particular result. And uh, uh, once again, we should go back and, and plug it in to verify that that's going to work. We won't take time in this video to do that. Here's the next problem. In this problem, all the x's are gathered together already. So I'll be able to, to use pretty standard algebra kind of reasoning to say, well, 2x squared is equal to 10. I'm just adding a, I'm sorry, a 20. I'm adding a 20 to both sides of the equation. Uh, then I could divide both sides of the equation by 2, so x squared is equal to 10. Then I can undo this squaring by taking the square root of both sides, so x is equal to either a positive or a negative square root of 10. That was quite a, a nice solution here. Uh, because all the x's were gathered together. The next problem looks like one that we might want to try factoring on. If you look at that for a few minutes, you might be able to convince yourself that it doesn't, does not factor nicely. So we could use the quadratic formula, 
But, but let's look at completing the square here. Completing the square really looks at this situation as if you were just doing regular algebra. Let's subtract a 25 from both sides. I mean, we're trying to get the x's all together. Now, we can't combine these, these x's because they're not like terms. But if we could make that a perfect square, then we could take the square root of both sides. So we're going to make that a perfect square. We know how to do that. If we take half of this number and square it, so we're adding a 16 to this side, this will factor as a perfect square. So I added 16 to this side. I'll need to add 16 to this side. That will be a 16 minus 25 on the right-hand side. This becomes a perfect square, x plus 4 quantity squared. Just multiply it out and verify that that's the case. It is equal to, over on this side, we've got a negative 9. So now we'll take the square root of both sides. On this side, we'll end up with an x plus 4 is equal to the square root of a negative 9. We know that that happens to be, and remember, we've got to worry about the plus and minus choices here. The square root of a negative 9 is a 3i. Getting complex numbers here now. So x is going to be equal to, there's two choices, minus 4. I'm just subtracting 4 from both sides. Either plus or a minus 3i. And once again, we should take that number, plug it back up into the original equation, and verify that both of them work. We'd have to use complex number arithmetic to do those computations. OK. Here's the next problem. I always hope that a quadratic will factor. Let's look at this one and see if, if we can get it to factor. We'd need to have a 3x and an x. That would give us the 3x squared. We've got to have a negative here, so one of these will have to be positive. One of them will have to be negative. I don't know for sure which one, but I'm going to need to have a 2 and a 1 somewhere. And, and when I multiply out to get the middle terms, they've got to subtract from each other and get a, a, a 5. So I, th I think a positive 5. So if I put a plus 2 here, that would give me a 6x and a minus 1 here, that would give me the 3x squared is OK, and the minus 2 is OK, and I get a 6 minus, 6x minus a 1x will give me the positive 5x. So once again, I can use the zero product property. 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. In the case that 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, I'll add a 1 to both sides, divide both sides by 3 x will need to be equal to 1 third. Subtract a 2 from both sides, x would need to be equal to a negative 2. So once again, we were able to factor use the zero product property. We should take these numbers and plug them back into the original problem and see if it works OK there. OK, here's the next problem. I'd like to be able to factor that again. A little bit of checking, you might discover that it's, it does not factor in the integers. Um, so we could complete the square as we did earlier, but just for illust illustrative purposes, let's use the quadratic formula. We have the quadratic formula memorized. If ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, then x is equal to a negative b. Well, b is a negative 3, so a negative negative b will be a plus 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared will be a negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times a is 1 times a negative 7 because c is a negative 7 all divided by 2 times 1 is just a 2 so simplifying that expression 3 is going to, uh, x is going to be equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus now, because I've got this negative 4 times that negative 7, 28 divided by 3. So the result is that x is equal to 3 plus or minus 
the square root of 37 divided by 3. Some people might like that written this way a little bit better. That's really 1 plus or minus the square root of 37 divided by 3. Okay. Now a couple more problems to look at here real quickly and that's the the questions about finding the uh, uh, finding the vertex of a uh, of a parabola. Uh, in this first one there, there's two ways to do that and we've proved both of those. We've uh, shown that the x value of the vertex is always going to be at a negative b divided by 2a. And so we could could just take the x value is going to be a negative 4 divided by 2 times 1. So the so <clears throat> the x value of the vertex in this one I already know that that value is going to be a uh, negative uh, uh, a negative 2. I'm going to that the other way to find that is to is to complete the square here and put it into the vertex form. So let's look at that. f of x would be equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now I'd like to have this be a perfect square. So let's work on that a little bit more. f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x. We know how to complete the square. Take half of this and square it. So that would be a plus 4. Now I've added 4 to all of this so I need to subtract 4 to compensate for for that result. So f of x is going to be x squared I'm sorry going to be x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. So this is in the right form now. It's f of x is equal to x minus a negative 2 squared plus a 1. That means that the vertex sorry my hand's been in the way. So, so we completed the square by looking at this taking half of this number and squaring it then this factors to be an x plus 2, x plus half of this number, quantity squared. I Because I added that 4 on, I had to subtract a 4 over here. That gave me that result. That is in the vertex form. So the vertex is therefore at the location of a negative 2, 1. Now we had found that x was, that the x value of the vertex was a negative 2 because we just took took uh, negative b over over 2a uh, to find out. We had known that already and this gave us the y value. Uh, let's just work one more of these uh, real quickly. On any of these it's easy to find out where the x value of the vertex is. If you find that x value you could just plug it back in to the function to find the y value of course. Uh, so let's let's maybe do that just real quickly on this one. Uh, the x value of the vertex is going to be a negative b. So that'll make that a positive eight divided by two times the a value. So the x value of the vertex here is going to be a negative four. Now I can take that negative 4 and plug it back into the original function. f of uh, negative 4 is going to be equal to a negative 4 I'm sorry, it's going to be a negative negative 4 quantity squared minus 8 times a negative 4 plus 5 Look at all the pieces that have to be there. I'm plugging in the negative 4 into here, so there's that negative. Then there's the negative 4 
squared minus 8 times the negative 4 plus 5. So this will be a negative. Negative 4 squared is makes that a positive 16. This will be a plus 32 plus 5. So that will be a, a, a 16 plus 5 will be a 21. So the vertex in this case is going to be at the location of a negative 4, 21. So we've got a couple different possibilities for, for finding vertexes is what we tried to illustrate here. Okay, there we go.